Greetings from Academia IAPSM eConnect. I am Dr. Navin J. Vignesh. We, the Team Challenges, present the ninth capsule of public health update series covering the month of May 2022. The present capsule covers the update from five topic areas. They are the health systems, non-communicable disease, communicable disease, demography, and nutrition. Now you will see them one by one. Hello all. I am Dr. Tenny George Pallipadan and I will be speaking about the health systems parts of this capsule. The Director General's Global Health Leaders Awards of the year 2022 was announced on 22nd May. It was announced by Mr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization. It was announced on the 75th World Health Assembly. India's 1 million ASHAs were one of the six recipients. This award system was established in 2019 by the World Health Organization. This award recognizes contributions to advancing global health as well as leadership and commitment to regional health. In a time when the world is facing inequity, conflict, food insecurity, calamity, and at the same time the COVID pandemic, these awardees have risen up to protect and promote the health around the world. Next, I'll be speaking about the National Emergency Life Support Courses, which was launched on 18 May 2022. It was the first such indigenous course by the Indian government developed by the Minister of Health and Family Welfare in association with the Trauma Center Wing of AIMS New Delhi. They provide standardized short-term certification courses for doctors, nurses, and paramedics. At present, a three-day course for the paramedics has been started. It also aims to develop trainers and training infrastructures for the courses. One to these such skill centers will be established by the end of 2026. In addition to this, a coordinated and fast-responding ambulance service system will also be established. Before, there were only foreign courses which were expensive and not apt for the Indian scenario. With this course, the issue will be solved, as well as there will be effective response to medical emergencies in the future. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mukta Mandal on behalf of Dr. Ravi Shikhavat, presenting you with the recent updates on World No Tobacco Day 2022, bearing the theme Tobacco, a Threat to Our Environment, which is celebrated on 31st of May every year. So this year's key messages are that tobacco harms the environment and hence make the tobacco industry clean up their mess. Also quit tobacco to save our planet and help tobacco farmers switch to more sustainable crops. This year a campaign was launched by National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences which had the following activities. First of all, it had the felicitation of winners of Quit Tobacco Be a Hero campaign. Then there was a platform for tobacco users to share narratives on quitting or attempts to quitting through self-made videos. It also had the promotion of National Tobacco Toll Free Quit Line as you can see in the slide and furtherance of M cessation services and last but not the least it provided the provision of standard treatment guidelines for substance use disorders and behavioral addictions and mobile app whether android or ios named addiction rx for assisting physicians to provide quality care in substance use disorders under drug de addiction program so, the third topic is about a recent outbreak that was caused by one of the endemic communicable disease and the disease is monkeypox. Monkeypox is an endemic viral zoonotic disease with symptoms similar to smallpox. The disease was confined to certain endemic countries in the Africa in the past, but monkeypox caused recent outbreaks in non-endemic countries. The reason for this outbreak is suspected to be international travel from endemic countries or through contact with infected pets that are transported. According to recent updates by WHO, 50 countries and 5 WHO regions have identified cases of monkeypox. But there are no cases in India as of 31st May 2022. The natural history of monkeypox is well understood, but there is no definitive treatment. 
vaccination against smallpox was found to be about 85% effective in preventing monkeypox by several studies but the availability of new year vaccine based on modified attenuated vaccinia virus strain is limited there is only supportive treatment and preventive measures so management guidelines for monkeypox was developed by ministry of health and family welfare according to guidelines all suspected cases should be identified and treated the suspected cases are one who had recent international travel in the last 21 days with symptoms of rash and flu like symptoms the rash in monkeypox develops in four stages the first stage is macule second is papule third is vesicle and fourth is pustule the most common presentation is vesico pustular the summary of guidelines can be better explained based on chain of infection to break the chain of infection at source level the case should be rapidly identified and treated through monitoring or surveillance to break the chain of transmission the patient is to be isolated and standard infection control precaution is to be followed to prevent the host factors symptom alleviation rehydration therapy and nutritional support are to be followed now moving on to the next theme which is demography the sample registration system also known as srs was initiated by office of register general ministry of home affairs india srs is a dual reporting system with continuous and retrospective recording of events by two independent functionaries the main objective of srs is to provide reliable annual estimates of birth and death rates by various states and national level separately for rural and urban areas the srs bulletin is released biannually and the latest bulletin was released on may 2022 according to recent bulletin the birth rate is 19.5 births per thousand population The crude birth rate is declining each year with a decline of 2.3 deaths per thousand population in the last decade. The crude death rate is 6 deaths per thousand population and it is also declining each year. But the decline of death rate is higher than the birth rate. This indicates that the India is at the late expanding stage of population growth. The infant mortality rate is 28 infant deaths per thousand live births. There is a 35% decline in the infant deaths compared to previous decade. This indicates a significant improvement in the health status of the country, both in the urban and rural areas. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Mukta again, making an attempt to brief you about the standard operating procedure for quality standards for rice fortification. On 75th Independence Day, 15th of August 2021, Honorable Prime Minister of India made an announcement to mandate rice fortification in all social safety net schemes by 2024. The SOP was published on 20th of May 2022 by Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. So. A fortified rice will have iron, zinc, vitamin B12 as fortificants when fortified rice kernels and regular rice in the ratio of 1 is to 100. So why fortification was needed? Mainly due to high prevalence of anemia. Also, rice being the staple food reaches about 65% of the population and has the highest uptake by the government safety net programs for example icds pds and mdm although thalassemic patients are advised to consume fortified rice under the proper guidance of a physician now moving on to the operational guidelines which has the following components as you can see in the slide though our main focus is on quality assurance and quality control which has quality management of the frk as one of the component then there is food safety and quality management at the mill 
external testing and lab empanelment. The promotional and regularity activities will be undertaken by FSSAI's food safety officers. They will be picking up random samples from the mill as well as fair price shops to ensure the quality of the fortified rice. Here is a brief overview of the nutritional status of the fortified rice. With this, we have come to an end on the public health update series for the month of May. We, the team challenges, comprising of Dr. Naveen Jai Vignesh, Dr. Ravi Shikhavat, Dr. Tenny Charge Palipadan, and myself, Dr. Mukta Mandal, would like to express our gratitude towards our mentors, namely, Dr. Malati Ma'am, Dr. Guri Sir for their continuous support and valuable inputs. We are also grateful to our advisors, Dr. Malati Sir, Dr. Parag Sir and Dr. Sanjeev Sir for their support, guidance and for bringing us all together on this platform. And last but not the least, we would also like to acknowledge with utmost sincerity and regards to the office bearers. So, stay tuned to IAPSM eConnect for more updates on public health. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.